Attention. LSU, Tiger TV, and LSU Student Media are not responsible for the thoughts and opinions expressed on this show. The content is produced solely by the show's slightly deranged creator, writer, and host, Ryan Banowitz. Enjoy! Hello, audience. This show is going to be a little different. If you're looking for jokes, this episode probably isn't going to be for you. But if you want to see what's going on in the world around you, then I strongly advise you to stick around. Yesterday, bombs went off at the Boston Marathon, and it was every bit as horrific as it sounds maybe even more than you can imagine without being shown. When real life horrors occur, the last thing you should do is turn away. You need to look and learn so you can make sure they never happen again. I hope you choose to look, audience, because I sure as hell plan on showing you. Every once in a while as a journalist, you're faced with horrors you simply wish you never saw and it pains you to even talk about it. The bombings at yesterday's Boston Marathon make me so upset that I want to cry or break things. I'm not sure which to do, but I don't think there's a reasonable reaction to what you're about to see. Warning, this footage is shocking and disturbing. I still can't come to terms with the fact that this is real. <laughs> If that's the first time you've seen that footage, I apologize for the shock. There's no way to prepare yourself for that, and I honestly am at a loss for words of how to fully describe my feelings of sickness and pure confusion. Why would something like that happen? What type of person would deliberately choose to do something like that? A sick one. As a human being, I literally cannot understand how somebody could draw themselves to create so much carnage. And for what reason? Right now, we don't know answers to any of those questions, but we wouldn't be the United States of America if we didn't do everything in our power to make the engineers of this atrocity pay. They can't take it back now, and they're going to wish they never made that mistake. We still do not know who did this or why, and people shouldn't jump to conclusions before we have all the facts. But make no mistake, we will get to the bottom of this, and we will find out who did this, we'll find out why they did this. Any, respons uh, any responsible individuals, any responsible groups will feel the full weight of justice. The full weight of justice. The president simply mirrored a sentiment felt around the whole nation. We will find you, and you will be forced to answer for the damage you caused. The numbers were steadily climbing all day yesterday, but I'll give you a rough outline that I still find difficult to stomach. News outlets all around the nation reported climbing numbers all throughout the day, but the fact of the matter is, Three people are dead, and well over 100 are injured, some of them gravely. One of the lives lost was an eight-year-old boy. An eight-year-old boy. How could he possibly deserve that? How could any of them deserve that? The street was crowded and the bombs went off near the finish line, which was a sick indicator of the disturbing planning of this attack. Also, the race was ran to honor the Sandy Hook families, and they were given special VIP treatment, which placed them close to the finish line. Details like that help describe the true horror and magnitude of this event. Why should those people have to see something like that again? It simply isn't fair. And I still feel like I haven't woken up from a bad dream. I wish I could. We all do. But it happened. The only thing to do now is act. Among this disaster, though, a few truly inspirational efforts emerged that solidify my belief in the human race. I know it's been said a thousand times by everyone at this point, but the actions of the Bostonian first responders and anybody involved in the response were the definition of solidarity in the face of crisis and disaster. If you watch the footage again, which I won't make you do, you'll notice how quickly they ran to do their duty and get people help. At a time like that, it would be easy to stand slack-jawed or curled in a ball of pure shock, but they chose to act. No word can describe how proud I am of those Bostonians and all the Bostonians that have helped and are continuing to aid the victims in any way possible. In a situation like this, I'm not even going to try to say there's a silver lining. There was a rumor that made me smile through my tears, though, so I'll share it with you to end this segment because hope has to exist in a time like this. The stories emerged of runners crossing the finish line and continuing to run until they reached the nearest hospital to donate blood. That 
is the human race I want to believe in. Not the one that caused the disaster, but the one that came together as a whole to combat pure evil. And I reiterate, those responsible will pay. We proved after 9-11 that it doesn't matter how long it takes, you can't hide from a unified America. We'll be right back. Beneath the stains of time, the feelings disappear. Horrific pictures, but I'm joined now by our political expert, Grant Yenny. Thanks for coming in a time like this. Mm. So first off, I know we've all seen it. Um, just what are your thoughts? What, what did you think when you saw it? You know, it's a, it's a tragedy. It's sickening. It's despicable. Um, at this time, we have to not jump to conclusions, not politicize it. We have to come together, as the president said, mm -hmm. as a unified America, no Republicans, no Democrats, and, you know, be one, that, not... That was the part that I found encouraging, was in the middle of that, the way that people came together and that they banded together. I, I, don't, I, I think that was the most encouraging part to me. Absolutely. You know, they, f the majority of the people did come together as one and, and do what they needed to do. You had heroes risking their lives. Mm -hmm. going straight into the rubble before the second bomb even went off. Real heroes, that's to, uh, in the video. To pull rubble off the people who the first bomb af affected. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course you're going to have your, your crazy people on both sides of the yeah. political fringe, your, your Chris Matthews types, who um, will say, like he said, mm -hmm. oh, well, it's tax day. So it, it had to be a Republican. See, I, I, that, I'm disgusted with that, too, because I don't think an event like this, you should jump to politicize that Not at, at all. all. And I just was going to say, I got some interesting perspective from one of my sisters who said that in international perspective, also, you said an earthquake went off, killing about 30 in Iran and mm -hmm. Pakistan. There's also a bomb that went off in Iraq, 30 dead there. These things happen, mm -hmm. just not in America. Right. We're not used to that. <laughs> right. Well, they happen at our border, but no one covers it. They happen at, the, the, where, at Juarez. Mm -hmm. A lot of violence. We, you have IEDs there all the time, uh -huh. it's not reported. What's well, the war on drugs. Yeah. Speaking of things that aren't getting reported on, I know that you've been quite upset about Kermit Gosnell, who I had never even heard of yeah, before and, you told me. I mean, you're about the third person to report on it, aside from Fox and The Blaze. Mm -hmm. uh, Kermit Gosnell is a monster. This guy is responsible for, he said, 15 uh, abortions a day. Only thing was, these were late term and into, they were born. And, See, and that's where I go with this story is that not, I, abortion issues aside, mm -hmm. when I sh saw what you showed me from the grand jury report of this trial, I was sickened. The, the, there were children past the legal point, well past it, that were being killed. And I, I'm not going to describe it, but gro grotesque fashion. If you want to, I, I recommend go look it up on the Blazes website. Mm -hmm. but, absolutely. He would, I mean, graphic, graphic. And warning, the, the article on the Blaze is very graphic. It will, um, it will shock you but it's something that we all need to, to learn about. This guy, 15 a day from 72 to 2011. Mm -hmm. He made millions off of murdering children. There, there are truly disturbing parts of that involving like children in the freezer, feet. I, it, it's really honestly mm -hmm. sickening and it, it surprised me that I had never heard of it before. I, right. asked, I asked my friends if they'd ever heard of it. They'd never heard of it before. Well, Why isn't this coming out? You saw in the, in the, in the uh, video, mm -hmm. They had the press row there in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. No one was there. No, no one. one showed up. The New York Times showed up for five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. New York Times showed up. Everyone else bailed on it. Washington Post said, well, we can't cover everything. You can't cover that? That's disgusting. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I can even, even see it from that side. I mean, it, that guy was murdering people. Mm -hmm. At that point, that, that's past the level that the, our government has decided that those are human beings. And we don't, you don't know the exact total that he killed, mm -hmm. he's only on charges for seven, and a patient, because his, in the office, the, the sanitation, it was mm -hmm. in sanitary conditions, it's a woman died. They called it the House of Horrors. Yeah. They called it the House, and yeah. honestly, Grant, I, can, House of Horrors. I can only thank you for bringing this story to my attention and other things like that. I highly encourage you, as much as I hate to say this, Glenn Beck's doing some serious reporting on this. Mm -hmm. um, Always, you can check Grant on his Twitter. He's probably the smartest guy I know. Come back after the break to get my final perspective on Boston. The future is what matters. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. This week's episode was the hardest show I've ever had to write and perform. I wish I could have talked about something light and silly, but it's my duty to talk about real life and how horrific it can truly be at times. 
For this week's takeaway, I'm going back to Boston because that's where my mind and my heart will be for the foreseeable future. The people of Boston showed us the proper way to respond to this crisis. The president said that the nation for a day didn't have any political parties or denominations, and I would love to believe this. Sadly, as anybody who has a Facebook knows, there are going to be people that try to point fingers for the next couple weeks. That is the absolute worst thing to do. I said it after Sandy Hook, and I'll say it again. People died. This is not the time to try to latch your crackpot conspiracy theories to a hot topic. Have an ounce of sensitivity for once in your life. If you're pointing at the government, you're wrong. If you're pointing at any certain ethnic group, you're wrong. If you claim to know anything real about who or why they did this, you're wrong. Here's the reality. Some parent in Boston is sitting at home today planning a funeral for an eight-year-old boy. Over the next couple of weeks and months, she will have to go buy an undersized coffin. She will have to take her boy to the undertaker and ask him to make her beautiful boy look just as vibrant as he was before April 15, 2013. Then she will bury her son. No mother should ever have to do that. And for you to say anything aside from, I'm sorry for your loss, would be a crime against humanity. Let the mourners mourn, and then go about making sure they never have to do it again. Until next week, remember one thing. We will get to the bottom of this, but it's also our job to never forget. Sleep tight, Boston. I hope you wake up from your nightmare as soon as possible.